So I recently restarted my PS2 collection, trying to get all the games I absolutely loved as a kid and had traded in. And I thought I'd head out to Keithley, a town that's about 30 minutes from Leeds, to see what I could pick up. And we got some goodies. So I thought we'd go through what I got, where I got it from, how much I paid, all that good stuff. But uh, I need a coffee first. So I've had my coffee fix. I've got a bag full of games. And I guess the first question is, why Keithley? And I mentioned on the first video I did when I started the PS2 collection, I'm in a bit of a dead spot when it comes to shopping for video games. I have to do most of it online. God. So alone. Keithley's got one of the biggest CEXs nearest to me. At least one that I think is worth going to and that's got a, a big enough selection of games, so I wanted to check that out, but there was also a shop I'd found online called Game On. I wasn't sure what they'd have, or if they'd have any PS2 games at all, but it seemed worth checking out. And as an extra, it's also a town that's really near Haworth, which, if you've not been, is absolutely gorgeous. I'll put some footage in from when Jane and me have been before. We didn't actually manage to make it this time, but it's definitely worth the drive out if you're ever in that direction. So we started off with the CX I mentioned, and it's a fairly decent sized one. They had some pretty good stuff in the front of the store. Uh, nothing that caught my eye for this time, but definitely stuff that's worth keeping an eye on in the future when I start other collections. And then inside, it, it seems pretty small when you first walk in, but if you head upstairs, it's actually got quite a big area with a lot of the PS2, uh, old Wii U, Wii games and that kind of thing along with all their DVDs and they had some pretty good stuff a few things I'm looking to pick up in the collection they had uh, the Simpsons game I know it's not amazing I know but it is one that I want for for my Simpsons collection which I've almost completed now but most of the stuff I found I know I can get cheaper if I either look around or wait on eBay. I was actually after some of the, the cheaper pickups and I'd also set myself quite a strict budget because it was pre-payday. Uh, so I'd set myself a budget to see what I could pick up for 20 pounds. Help me, I'm poor. Which meant that I decided to hold off some of the more expensive games like Bully, which I'll actually cover in the next video because I've managed to pick it up. And I ended up having a few things I was considering picking up. Now I didn't actually end up picking all these up, which Turned out to be a good thing, and we'll go over why in just a sec, but let's have a look at what I actually got. NBA Street Volume 3. I absolutely love this franchise, and if you've watched any of my videos, you probably know that by now. I got it to complete my EA Big and NBA Street collection, so it can go along with these three other games I've got already. It's probably one of the only sports franchises I, I really, really love, and that brought a more arcade style of gameplay into the game. And I've been replaying it again and realized how good the soundtrack was. And, and it's definitely a level up from NBA Street 2 in, in that section. Although when it comes to load times and stuff like that, at least on the PS2, it was definitely a lot slower. But you can tell why when you see the graphics and how scaled up some of the actual character animations are. It's definitely a game I'll be playing all the way through and I'm really enjoying. So I think that was a great pickup for the collection. I paid £5 for it, which is, is pretty good. It's what I've seen it going for generally. However, it didn't come with a manual, which I've come to expect from CEX, to be honest. And the disc is pretty scratched up. I'm not sure if it will come up on the camera, but I'm surprised that wasn't put through something to, uh, yeah, clean the scratches up a bit, which I know they can do. I used to work in CEX, and it's definitely something I'm a bit disappointed about. And you'll see with some of the other games I picked up that it seems to be a common theme in that store. So maybe something to watch out for. And if you spot it before you leave, ask them if it's possible to have the disc clean, because it's definitely something they do. The next game I picked up is Fur Fighters Vigo's Revenge. I think it's pronounced Vigo's, Vigo's, I don't know, something like that. And the main reason I picked this up is because of Acclaim. That logo right there. I've talked about Acclaim on a video previously. They did some wild PR stunts, some of which got them into trouble, some of which they had to cancel. I won't go over it in this video again. You can watch my last one, or I will be doing an in-depth video about them soon. Uh, I'm trying to pick up some of the games to actually play through myself. But I was instantly drawn A to the cover because I love anything with that kind of art style and B to the overall idea of the game with these very cartoony characters and guns, something that obviously people still love with the likes of Power World, etc. This game is very much a standard third person shooter just with that cartoony like visuals that caught my attention. It was actually developed by Bizarre Creations and only published 
by Acclaim, but it's got the logo on there, so it, it's good for the collection. And it was actually released initially for the Dreamcast in 2000, and then for Microsoft Windows. This is actually an updated version for the PS2. And funnily enough, later on in 2012, there seems to be an iPad version that came out too, called Fur Fighters Vigos on Glass. And I'm kind of excited to check it out, at least because it looks cool, and, and reviews say the same thing. Looks pretty, controls horribly. Uh, so it might not be that fun to play, but we'll test it, we'll have a look, and we'll let you know what we think. In terms of the quality of what CX actually gave me, I mean, first off, the cover's absolutely filthy and actually torn in some bits. Then it has got the manual, which I was pretty happy about until I realized that CX had themselves put a sticker over the front and then ripped it off at some point, or someone else had bought it off CEX, torn the sticker off, and then traded it back in at a later date. So that's pretty gutting, but at least it's got the manual. And then comes the disc, which is, I'm not sure if you can catch it in the camera, I'll try and get a better shot, but it is absolutely scratched up to bits, hasn't been put for a disc cleaner, absolutely not. I paid two pounds for it. It's obviously a game that hasn't got that much value. I just wanted it to add to the collection and it was an easy pickup. Up next, we've got two games that Jane actually recommended. They're games that she played and I haven't as far as I remember. First off is Primal. And I've got to say, it's a game that appealed to me too as a kid. I'm not sure why I didn't play it. For some reason, I kind of always get it confused with the word primeval and think it's going to have dinosaurs in it instead of gargoyles. But it's definitely a game that's caught my eye on the shelves a few times and that I'm excited to try out and play through with Jane. We'll definitely do a video talking all about it once we get through it. It's an action-adventure horror game where you play as a 21-year-old woman called Jennifer Tate and you're searching for your boyfriend for a series of demonic rounds, which sounds great to me definitely excited to jump in. I paid two pounds for it, so I think that's an absolute bargain, especially for a game that Jane has good memories of and that we wanted in the collection. It came with the manual in amazing condition uh, and really nice quality manual as well. And the disc has got some light scratching in it. Again, something where I wish they'd have put it through the cleaner. It's not as bad as the other two, but as I said, something to watch out for if you're in any of the CEX branches, have a look at the discs, and if you think it's worth it, ask if they can clean it up for you. Up next, we've got Theme Park World. Now, I never played this, but I was massively into Roller Coaster Tycoon, and as soon as Jane saw it, she said she had some really good memories of it. So we picked it up. It's by EA Games, and I think you get the gist. You, you build and manage theme parks. This was actually a sequel and was released as Theme Park 2 in North America. The first one being Theme Park. Theme Hospital and Theme Aquarium were thematic sequels to that first Theme Park game. This was initially developed and released for Windows, which is one of my worries about this game, this port to the PS2. As a kid, I always preferred playing any kind of strategy or sim game on the PC just because, because of the ease of use with the keyboard and mouse. I found it a lot easier. And it's not till quite recently, late PS4, PS5, where some games I feel have managed to get a lot of a, a better feel to creating something like a theme park with a controller. And I've still found issues with a lot of the games when they're ported to consoles, especially if you try and build a, a big park. Definitely an issue I found with Planet Coaster, a game that I really, really love, but as I got to the later stages of on the PS4, the console just started to struggle and the lag was unbearable. So I'm excited to see how, how this runs on the PS2, and hopefully it's as fun as Jane remembers. We paid £3.50 for the game. It came with the manual in pretty good condition too, and the disc, to be fair, looks pretty good. So excited to try that out, and that's a good addition to the collection, and that is all we picked up from CEX. There was a lot more I could have picked up, a lot more that I want to add to the collection at some point. But as I said, I had quite a tight budget of 20 pounds this time round, and we'd spent 12 pounds 50 on it here and still had one more shop that we wanted to check out. So we walked across town to Game On. And let me tell you, I'm, I'm really glad I did because it's a really cool shop with, with some really good stock. I wasn't sure if they'd actually have that much retro stuff because they don't sell anything online and there wasn't that many photos up. And it's true that a lot of their collection is the newer generation consoles, but what they do have of retro stock was pretty good and pretty fairly priced. You can see their PS2 section is 
one third or less of the size of CEX, but I still managed to pick up some really good bargains. The guy who sold it to us was really cool. I was actually unsure about picking some of them up because I'd opened the cases up and seen that they didn't have manuals inside. But when I talked to him, he said he did actually have the manuals. He just tends to take them out. So I ended up going back and, and picking up some more. So yeah, worth checking out. They had some box stuff too that looked really cool. And I'll be going back when I start collecting for some other systems. So let's see what I actually got. You know how I had the Lord of the Rings game in my hands at CEX? So I picked that up from here. Now, there's a couple of things. It, it came in a DVD case, as you can see. So I'll have to find a, an actual PS2 case for that. It did come with the manual, which is in pretty good condition. It's got some scuffing at the top, but nothing major. And the disc itself has got some light scratching, but again, nothing horrific. And I played this game so much as a kid, most of the Lord of the Rings games, in fact. I loved the books, I loved the films, and I loved the games. I grew up in peak Lord of the Rings era. And although I'm not a, a super fan, and I think Jane knows a lot more about the films and Lord of the Rings in general than me, but I definitely spent a lot of time with that franchise growing up. And, and these games were such a big part of my childhood, especially playing this one two player with my friends on a couch was, was a great experience. It's a hack and slash action game which the developers actually said was like a modern version, not so modern anymore, but you, you get the gist, a modern version of Gauntlet. I'm not sure I'd go that far, but I definitely really enjoyed it. You get to play as nine characters from the film, including Gandalf, Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, Sam and Frodo, and it includes a bunch of the sets and scenarios from the film. So any of the film fans would have really enjoyed it, but on top of that, it, it was a really good game. At least that's what I remember. Ratings seem to agree with me though. And it's kind of a shame that we haven't got games as good as this from the franchise in recent years. Yes, we're looking at you, Gollum. Which I guess answers the question if I'll be trying to collect every single Lord of the Rings game for my collection. PS2 wise, definitely, but everything else, well, I definitely don't want that Gollum game in my collection, and if we have a quick look, there seems to be a ridiculous amount of Lord of the Rings games. And I know some of them are pretty good, like, I played Shadow of Mordor, I had a pretty good time with it, and I know the online games have a pretty big fan base. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot there that I didn't realise were even games, and it might be something I have to dig into deeper at some point. I guess the big question is, how much did I pay for this? And was it a better bargain than in CEX? And the answers I paid, well, the receipt says absolutely nothing for it. And that's kind of true because they were running a buy one, get one free deal. And uh, yeah, he helped us out with every single game that was priced equally. He did buy one, get one free. He didn't do it with the cheapest game in the bundle, if that makes any sense. So I guess in theory, I paid £1.50 for this game between this and one other, and CEX had it for sale at six pounds, so I definitely got a bargain for that. And the other game I got in that buy one get one free bundle was Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Now, I'm not 100% sure if I played this as a kid or not, and that's just because there was so much Star Wars stuff and I played quite a lot of it. I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan in the world, and I haven't really kept up with, with any of the recent stuff, so apologies to any fans watching. I might get round to it at some point, but uh, I'm kind of jaded by the whole Star Wars franchise at this point. However, I've got really good memories of the games around that era, all the way through to the Star Wars Battlefront games. I've generally enjoyed a lot of the games that the franchise has released. And I was frantically trying to find the last game to, to go in this buy one, get one free bundle, uh, and that's what I spotted. Now, was it a good choice? I mean, it's got fairly good reviews online, and it was developed and published by LucasArts, who did a lot of my favourite games as a kid, like the first few games I remember really loving. And talking about stuff like Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Maniac Mansion, Day of the Tentacle, Star Wars Rebel Assault, that kind of stuff that I'd got into early on. And I find this era of games quite interesting because it was bridging so many generations of console. It was released on iOS, believe it or not, Nintendo DS, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PSP, Wii, Xbox 360, Microsoft Windows, Nintendo Switch, N-Gage, J2ME? What is a J2ME? Java Platform Micro Edition. Okay, I did not know that and have, have learned something new. 
But although I say it was released for all those consoles, apparently the game's not, not quite the same. And I can't remember if I played it on the PS2 or PS3 or Xbox 360 possibly. The PS2 version is exactly the same as the PSP and Wii versions, and that's different to PS3 and Xbox 360 versions. So yeah, I will play through it, I will let you know what I think, and if you've played it, let us know if you've got any hints, any tips, if you think I should completely avoid it, uh, leave it down in the comments please. CEX generally sells that game for about £5, so £1.50 in that deal was, was absolutely a bargain, and it's got the manual in pretty good condition, a few scuff marks at the bottom, and the disc needs a really good clean, but it's it's not too badly scratched up, especially not compared to the ones we got from CEX. We've still got four more games to come, one of which actually completes one of my sub collections, but I guess it's a good time to ask you to uh, hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this video. I'm really early stages into my PS2 collection, so if you're joining at this stage in the journey, say hi down below. Up next, I picked up GTA San Andreas. This is obviously a game that had to go in my collection. I've already started picking up some Rockstar games. Some will be coming up in the video I've got coming up in the next few days. As soon as I saw this for four pounds in the shop, I knew I wanted to pick it up. It has got the manual. It's a bit scuffed up, but it has got it. It hasn't got the map, unfortunately, which is something I want to pick up at some point. And the disc is got some light scratching, but is in fairly good condition. And for four pounds, that's an absolute bargain. And I say four pounds, but remember it was buy one, get one free. So it's technically only two pounds, right? And it sells for 10 pounds at CEX. So an absolute bargain picking this up. I mean, there's not much I really need to say about GTA. You know the franchise. This was the second GTA game I played, the first being Vice City. So I've got a lot of nostalgia for it and I'm looking forward to replaying it because it's been absolute years and I've spent most of my time on GTA Online recently. Will it still hold up? I hope so. I really do. But let me know if you've played it. I think it will definitely be a good trip and at the very least a massive nostalgia hit. So the other game I picked up on that buy one get one free is Tony Hawk's Underground 2. Definitely games I want in my PS2 collection. I've got so many memories of playing the Tony Hawk series as a kid, all the way through to American Wasteland probably. And it completely changed the, the stuff I was into. It got me really into skateboarding. It made me pester my parents for skate brands that they couldn't really afford. It made me discover new bands and types of music I'd not listened to before. And I think those games really established the stuff that I'd get into for probably the rest of my life. Now I've got great memories of the Underground series too, although the first four games are definitely my favorite. I wasn't completely sold on the on the cartoony style of the game, especially at the time. It has grown on me and I've gone back into it and it's pretty good fun. Although I will say I'm definitely not as good at it as I was at the first games. And again, I think the PS2 struggles a bit with, with the performance on this game compared to, to the earlier games. If you've played any of the Tony Hawk's games, you kind of know what you're expecting. But it was a big shift from the earlier games when when this series came out. Obviously this is the second Underground, I will pick up the first one at some point, and this one follows the formula that first set pretty closely. You play on a team, in this case on Tony Hawk's team, battling against Bam Majera's team, and this is Bam Majera before he was, well, Bam Majera now. At the time, he was massive, he was really popular, his band CKY was really popular, and I guess it really shows how embedded into popular culture he was when he is one of the main protagonists in a, in a video game that Tony Hawk's releases. If you like the Tony Hawk series, you'll, you'll definitely enjoy this game, so I'd recommend checking it out if you haven't already. The game came with a manual which is in pretty good condition, almost pristine, other than some very light scuffing in the corner, so I'm really stoked with that. And the actual disc has got some light scratching, as you'd expect for a game of this age. However, I've got one gripe with Game On. Just one. And it's placing these stickers on the actual discs. These stickers are so hard to get off the CD. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a shame. CEX sell this for eight pounds. 
So two pounds on that buy one, get one free with GTA is an absolute steal. I'm really happy with that. In fact, you can get three pound trading voucher at CEX for that. So again, if you were just looking to flip, that would be a good one to do so. I won't be doing that uh, with Tony Hawk's Underground 2 unless again in a car boot or charity shop, I see another another version as cheap as that that I can that I can use for some trading credit at CEX. Up next, I picked up Prince of Persia, The Two Thrones, which I'm really happy with because it completes the Prince of Persia collection. The other two games I had on the video last week. Now, I think this is actually the only game in the collection I might not have played. I think I was in the process of moving out or had moved on to other consoles at the time this was released. So I'm really looking forward to playing through it. Jane and me are actually playing through the first Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time at the moment. We're about halfway through the game. So we'll be playing through these and doing a video about them at some point. I will say the first game so far has been great fun. Some stuff you'd expect with the controls and stuff, but yeah, we'll do a deep dive on that really soon. If you've never played any of the Prince of Persia games, then I definitely recommend checking them out. They're some of my first video gaming memories and they're definitely a lot of fun. I'd say that all of them have been quite a lot of fun, to be fair. They're action adventure games with big emphasis on puzzle solving and exploration, but they've also got really cool fighting mechanics, especially the PS2 generation ones, not so much the MS-DOS one. Like, that's not what I meant there. And just for PS2 at the time, some of the time adjustment mechanics in the first game and the wall running and on all of the physics seemed really cool. And I think it, it looks really good to this day. The really interesting or, or strange thing about this release is that it's actually censored in Europe. It's not the same version as was released in the States. And Ubisoft kept very quiet as to why and lost a lot of popularity at the time because of it. There are speculations as to why and the missing ability to cut body parts or to split enemies vertically, slightly less blood, and several female looking statues that were altered to not having breasts. They were just fan speculation, uh, not the cutting off body parts, that, that bit's true, but the vertically splitting enemies on half can only be done to certain enemies and not human enemies. Uh, so yeah, basically that whole rumour got blown out of proportion and it seems that the censorship was, was very minor. The game came with the manual, however the cover was, was ripped, unfortunately. The rest of the manual is in pretty good condition, but yeah, that's a shame, and the disc is pretty scratched up, I'd say similar to some of the CEX ones. So I will probably take these in at some point and have them cleaned or do it myself. If I'm gonna do it myself, I need to test it with some cheaper games. I've seen some tutorials online and I know there's some things you can buy, but I, I need to fully research in it. If you've got any experience, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to learn all about it. I picked this up for a pound, so on the buy one, get one free, 50p essentially, and it sells for £2.50 at CEX. So again, a really good bargain, uh, especially to complete that Prince of Persia collection. And the last game we'll cover today is Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. For some reason, in a, an Xbox case, I'm not sure why that's the case, but 50p. Seeing as I picked up the other Lord of the Rings game, and I've got so many memories of playing these as a kid, it was a good pickup. It came with the manual in really nice condition. The disc itself has got some light scratching, but nothing major. CX sells it for three pounds, so 50p was, was a great deal. And it's a game that I completed as a kid, and I'm gonna have a lot of fun going back to. You can play as Aragon, Legolas, and Gimli, and I think I remember this being my favorite in the franchise, but don't hold me to that until I replay them, because it's been, it's been quite a while. And that's the six games that I picked up from, from Game On in Keefley. And I'd say that's a, a pretty good pickup for eight pounds, which means in total I spent 20 pounds 50p, so 50p above the budget I'd say myself, but that's, that's not too bad in my eyes. I, I can handle 50p. We did actually go on to, to visit Game, which used to have its own store, but has been moved in, like a lot of the games in the country, into a Sports Direct. And obviously they're getting rid of a lot of their pre-owned games. Uh, nothing that stood out, no bargains if I was looking to flip, and nothing that I wanted for the collection. Uh, we did ponder over some Lego sets for a little bit because they were on sale, 
uh, but as I said, it wasn't quite payday yet, so we decided to to hold off and show some some self restraint. All in all, Keefley was actually better than I thought. I did not expect to come back with ten games for twenty pounds. That's the collection up to twenty with more on the way. So yeah, like. Subscribe, let us know what you thought down below, give us some recommendations, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you next time.